Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Annunciation Catholic Church. Thank you for your presence and prayers as we gather today to hear the word of God and partake in the Eucharistic feast. Before our celebration begins, please silence your cell phones and turn off all electronic devices. Thank you. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Ordinary Time, Cycle B. Presenting the gifts today will be Anna and Maria Isabel Sales. The intention for today's Mass is for the people of our parish and Angel and Montserrat Olmo. Father Ivan Olmo and concelebrants will be presiding over our celebration. Please stand and thank you for gathering with us. At this time, please take a moment of silence to reflect in prayer as we prepare for today's celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather as family, and as family we welcome all those who are gathered with us today. We say welcome, and we are most glad that you are here. In the gospel, we hear Jesus ask a most profound question. What are you looking for? And then he invites us to come and see. He knows what we're looking for because we are looking for Jesus. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate 
the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am, Lord. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? I did not call you, Eli. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me? But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as of yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am. You called me? Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep. And if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 
When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. I 
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ, but whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him? Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples. As he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw they were following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come, and you'll see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah just translate Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Hephus, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What are you looking for? It's a profound question. But you have to listen to yourself in order to be honest about your response. You have to ask yourself, what is it that I'm longing for? What do I desire? What do I need? And ultimately, whatever it is that you're looking for, will that thing or will that person save you? Will that thing or will that person give you eternal life? Will that thing that you're looking for and hoping for 
or that person? Will that person love you unconditionally? Will that person forgive you from the heart? Will that person grant you eternal happiness and eternal peace? If we listen to the question and we truly go into the depths of our being and listen to our souls cry out, and what we're looking for is the one that can satisfy all our aches, all our desires, all our true hopes, our true dreams. And the only one that can do that is Jesus. We come here because in our baptism, God put such a desire in our hearts and our souls for him. He put such a longing inside of our hearts. As St. Augustine says, our hearts now are restless until they rest in God. And in God alone is our true happiness and our true peace. We're created for God. We're designed for God. We're created for happiness, for eternal peace. And the one who says, what are you looking for, already knows the answer. He already knows the answer. And then he invites us, come, and you will see. Come, you will taste, and you will see. We have a great longing. We come because we need to be loved. We come because we need to see the face of mercy. We come because we want to be listened to. We need to be healed. We need to be blessed. We need God's grace. We need to hear, go in peace. Your sins have been forgiven. And the only one the only one that can say that to us and satisfy all our aches, our longings, our desires is Jesus. And so if you're looking for something else or someone else, that person or that thing will leave you dissatisfied unless you seek it through Jesus. In the Mass, we come we come like the Magi. We come like John the Baptist. We come like Peter and James and John and all the disciples. We come like all the saints. We come to be fed. We come to be nourished. We come to be listened to. We come to be loved. The Eucharist, Eucharistic love is Jesus. And he invites us to come, come and see, come taste and see the goodness of the Lord. And the one thing that the Father has asked us to do is the one thing that we're so poorly at. He says, this is my beloved son. Behold him. This is my son. The father says, listen to him. And we are terrible listeners because we're hearing the wrong thing and we're listening to the wrong person and we're following the wrong voice. Right now, Listen to your own thoughts. Listen to your own feelings inside. Listen to the, your desires. They're speaking to you. Your thoughts are speaking to you. Your feelings are speaking to you. Your pain speaks to you. Your wounds speak to you. 
Your anger speaks to you. Your unforgiveness speaks to you. Your greed speaks to you. Your envy is speaking to you. And what is it saying to you? And where is it leading you? And know that is not from God. And that is not God's voice speaking to you. God's voice wants to heal. God's voice wants to care for. God's voice wants to touch the pain and heal the broken hearts and liberate those who are oppressed from their sinfulness. God wants to set you free. And in the Mass, God is always speaking to us. It's like we say, speak, Lord, but we're not listening. We have to be able to behold. John the Baptist says, behold. In the, the Mass, we hear, behold, the Lamb of God. Are you listening to what you say to the Eucharist, what you say to Jesus? Behold him. He's the one that says, come. What are you looking for? Oh, Jesus, I'm looking for you. I need you to bless me. I need you to fill me with your grace. I need you to love me. I need you to heal me. I need you to forgive me. I need you to be merciful to me. I need you to pardon me. And I need you to give me your peace. That's what we're looking for. It's what we're longing for. It's what we need. Let us listen with a greater awareness of God's presence. Let us behold him by listening attentively to what's happening inside. Today, we hear Samuel was hearing God's voice, but he didn't know who was speaking to him. How many times does God speak to us and we don't know who's speaking to us? But if the enemy speaks to us, we listen to him. We listen to everything that he says. He's always talking. He's disrupting our relationship with God. He's such a distracting noise. He's a gong. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to draw your attention away from the one who asks us, what are you looking for? What do you need? I'm all that you need. I'm what you're looking for. I can set you free. Let us ask the Lord to help us to hear his voice and to renounce the other voice. To like, shh, be quiet. I don't want to listen to you. I want to listen to Jesus and how Jesus speaks to me. He speaks words of encouragement. He lifts me up. His words are like light. They're like sunshine. Even on a cloudy day, on a rainy day, on a blizzard day, God's words bring light, they bring love, they bring life. They help us to not look at the problems, but simply hear the remedy, the solution. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. So ask yourself, what are you truly looking for and what do you need and the Lord already knows. We need him. We're looking for him. We're looking for Jesus. And where do you find him? Oh, he's waiting for you in his Eucharist. He's looking for you in prayer and in scripture. He's longing for you. But don't look outside. Look inside because Jesus is in your heart waiting for you, listening to you, 
waiting for the moment that you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is truly listening to you and you alone. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. We entrust our Heavenly Father with our lives and our needs in the same hope as Samuel and all the apostles. For those who dedicate their lives to the work of the church and for all who respond to the call of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government leaders, that they embrace the way of kindness, compassion, and justice in the decisions they make, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world and for a greater respect for the dignity of all, as each person is created in the image and likeness of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, that it listen and respond to God's will for our life, together as we live out the mission of the church in this place and time in history, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in the military and our local first responders, may, we, may the protective hand of God be upon them as they serve and protect, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry and the homeless, for those in hospitals and nursing homes, for the homebound and all caregivers, and for those who suffer from illnesses or addictions not seen by the eye, may they know the healing, merciful presence of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God lead them to their eternal home, especially Angel and Maserat Olmo. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the recently deceased, Georgina Barica Roque, Josephina Cabral, Esther Adibimpi Fashoro, Wanda Felice, Henry Bernard Ceres, Gus Ward, Connie Papa, Rex Beller, Michael O'Reilly, Colin Pratt, Corey Quebec, Jerome Barrett, Milton Malave, Barb Kohler, Jim Joyce, Donald Hugh Ashby. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers which we now speak in the silence of our hearts and for the people of our parish. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Heavenly Father, we beg you to hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy and divine will. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord's sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of this Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <laughs> Let us just take this brief holy moment and just to acknowledge that God is listening to you. He hears all your thoughts, your words. He knows you, for he dwells inside of you. And all he asks is that we are attentive to him and how he speaks to you and speaks to me. Be mindful of your thoughts and draw all your attention to this holy, sacred moment. You are indeed holy, O Lord the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, 
for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may remember to be co-heirs to eternal life, we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by the vine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy to be sent on my name. Only say the word of my soul.
seconds and I will raise you up and I will raise you up and I will raise you up on the last day the bread that I Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want you to please be seated for a couple of announcements. Don't we want to say thank you to our choir, our amazing choir. Thank you all so much. <laughs> As always, we invite you to please take a bulletin. There's a lot going on, and so we're thankful for all that is happening, all the various ministries and the prayer gatherings. So we invite you to please take a bulletin home so you can see all that's coming up in the weeks to follow. Um, one of the couple of the highlights that we want to give you is we're going to have a marriage renewal weekend. That's going to be February 2nd to the 4th. That's going to be in the St. Gabriel Life Center. And registration for that is going on now. And you could uh, find out how to do that in the bulletin. Also on uh, Monday, January the, the 15th at 7 p.m. in the Nazareth Center. That's tomorrow. There's uh, information on that upcoming pilgrimage with Father Augustine that's going to visit Marian Shrines. That's also in the bulletin. The information is going to be, the session is tomorrow at 7 p.m. On Wednesday, January 17th, we're going to have the second of a series of workshops on grief, recovery, and support. Thank you for all those who came out last week. That's going to be at the St. Gabriel Life Center this Wednesday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. On Thursday the 18th at 7 p.m. in the Nazareth Center, uh, we have a, the series going on again, the Keys to the Council series. They're looking at some of the documents of Vatican II. This one's going to be on Lumen Gentium. Um, for those who didn't go to the first one, that's okay. You can come to this one if you'd like. Again, that's Thursday, January the 18th at 7 p.m. in the Nazareth Center. 
Also on the 18th, that Thursday, the St. Vincent de Paul truck is going to be out in the North Campus. That's by the Grotto side. They're going to be there on Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. As always, we thank you for providing new or gently used clothing, household appliances or furniture. Um, as always, they're not uh, seeking any food donations at this time. And, and finally, I just, I, I wanna, uh, with a heart that's full of gratitude, the last three years I've been attending a school of spiritual direction. It's with the Institute of Priestly Formation in Mundelein, Chicago, and this afternoon I'm flying out for the conclusion of that program, and it concludes this Friday. And so, no, I'm gonna feel so terrible praying for you as you're in the 40s and 50 degrees, <laughs> as I'm in minus 15 praying for all of you. Suddenly, 20 degrees doesn't look that bad when you have minus 15, but I, thank you. This, this has been an amazing program. I look forward to getting those last final graces so that I can come and share all that grace with you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.